Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. How about this fella who decided to light himself on fire outside of Trump's trial? Come on, bro. But you know, he probably he probably thinks more people should be doing it, and I can't blame him. But is it a bad omen? Someone doing that? A bad omen? It's like when a when a, a black cat crosses your path, or if it rains on your wedding day. What if someone sets himself on fire outside your trial? It's got to be a little bit of bad luck, hasn't it? It's never really associated with joy. Is it someone burning himself alive? It's not really a happy thing to do. You don't see many people doing it outside of weddings. I'm just trying to get in the mind of someone like this. I'm trying to get in the bloodstream of a fella uh, with this sort of capability. Because not a lot of people could do this. I believe it might be the hardest way to actually kill yourself. And the most serious way of breastfeeding. <laughs> Breastfeeding, the serious, the most serious way of protesting. You know, I know, I know a lot of fat people whose only chance of burning calories is pouring gasoline over themselves and lighting them on fire. Do you eat breakfast the day that you do this? Do you wake up and go, "Ooh, I'm not going to have that extra slice of toast," you know? I'm going to, uh, I'm going to just keep it light. You know, I want to be flammable today. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend this one if you want to. If you want to survive, if you want to carry on the fight, it's kind of like a, a bit of a all things on the table type deal, isn't it? I mean, people, you'll definitely get people's respect if you burn yourself alive. Um, I mean, he's got my respect. He's a hardcore dude. This, uh, what's his name? Uh, I don't even know his name. That's how, uh, that's how important it was and uh, how well he did. It's frightening. It's almost like we're reaching the third act of the movie, right? People aren't doing this at the start of the movie unless it's, you know, Batman, are they? But we haven't got, we haven't got the Dark Knight in this universe. We've got Trump, so... Uh, a gentle soul whose mother sent him into a decline. Well, I mean, he was a gentle soul, at least, this guy, so... You know, we need to make a new rule, I think, for the news agencies, because everyone that drives a car into pedestrians, you know, or kicks some codger to death, is an angel. And it's not really adding up in my, in my mind. We need to start publishing some report cards of what these kids were like in school. You know, or hopefully AI, right, will get to a certain point where it's advanced enough where we can start questioning Alexa. You know, a little speaker in the corner of, the, corner of your room can give a statement of what you were actually like. Hey, he, he was a porn addict and he couldn't spell very well. It's crazy how you can be a gentle soul at 300 degrees Fahrenheit on, a, on the side of a fucking pavement. Look at this bit as well in, in the article. His social media profile makes a significant shift from posting about friends and family to posting about criminal government and cryptocurrency. Damn. Don't you wish more people that posted about Bitcoin would have set themselves on fire? But he started posting conspiracy theories, this guy. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I thought me and this monster couldn't be any different, but I think we'd have been best friends, to be honest, if, uh, if I got to know him. If we grew up in the same neighborhood, maybe I could have pushed him in the right direction, you know? Maybe get him uh, into Islam or something. You know, you never think about it, do you? I mean, everyone gets into conspiracy theories. I mean, I, I remember my first 9-11 video, but you never think that in 10 years' time you're going to be outside a Manhattan court on fire. Do you? You kind of just think it's a fun little hobby. People are so far into them now that you can't even have like a fun conversation with nutters anymore. I mean, back when I was like 12 years old, you could walk down the street and you could like, you know, you could give someone 50p and be like, oh, how did you lose your legs, mate? And they, they you know, they'd say, oh, the food companies, they're feeding us poison. That's it. That's all you needed. You'd walk along and it'd be fine. Now you even speak to people that have got a mortgage normal people of society you you express some sort of dissatisfaction with the government and they will talk for hours about mud floods about telephone poles giving people chinese diseases they're actually they've actually you know they're so complicated now you need to read up you also almost need like a degree like a bachelor's degree to even talk about some of these conspiracy theories i mean i draw the line at mud floods i think we're all trying to build a better world. I don't know if you guys are, but listen, I am. I think about my children's children all the time. 
well, I actually think about my children and how I'm actually going to successfully accomplish that goal. So you've got to find a girl, isn't it? And girls at the minute, I mean, basically a lot, a lot of them have got that motherly instinct of wanting to stay home and not do anything mixed up with being a whore for five pounds on the internet. We're striving for a future where there's no more deaths from natural causes. Can you imagine that? It's not hard. The only deaths in the future, guys, will be from natural disasters. And natural disasters are racist. Avalanches are a white people killer. Yeah. It's a very spiritual thing for a white person to die in a mountain. I think there's something inside us where we strive to be frozen to death or something like that. Rich people, uh, they love telling others that their dad died from some sort of head trauma scheme. They all get together at these, these events. You know, at the end of the year, stock meeting. They think, oh, God, I've got to kill a story. My fucking dad left me $3 billion and fucking died on a, on a ski resort. I'm not a saint, guys. I mean, I try and come across like a, a know-it-all, but I really don't know much at all. And I kind of just bullshit my way through this. Um, but I have a bit of that DNA in me. I want it to just die. Just want it to die on a mountain. More like. It feels like you'll get to the afterlife that way, innit? It's a little bit closer to heaven. Wouldn't take that long, the journey. A lot of these motherfuckers dying on uh, planet Earth at ground zero. They're going to get caught up in traffic. That's what I've heard anyway. An extra day and a half traveling to get to heaven. But if you're going to hell and die on ground zero, it's instant. Well, I need to uh, freeze to death on a mountain, ladies and gentlemen, if I'm even going to consider my life a success. Frozen for eternity. Any sort of notoriety. All the people that are climbing Everest in 6,000 years, will be going, how long, Mr. Sherpa? How long until we can stop? And then they'll turn around and go, we can stop in five minutes when we get to the frozen lanky retard with a blue jacket on. And there I'll be. Taking a little nap. People always know me that, as that guy. Because that's what you are when you die on the mountain. The Sherpas don't remember your name. They don't go, oh, it's, it's the guy Ted that was such a fun laugh at, at the camp before we came up here and he ran out of oxygen. Yep, he was a good guy, family man. No, he remember you as the one with red pants on that didn't say much. They don't even remember anything about you. They make up stuff. They say, oh, that guy, oh, he, he was weak. They want everyone to have confidence when they're going up. They don't want to hear, oh, red guy, he was the hardest man in the world. Red pants. He could have never, we could have never done this without him. And we tried to save him, but we couldn't. They're going to say, he was weak. He had no business being on this mountain. And to be honest, the world's better off without him. That'll hype everyone up who's behind the Sherpa. They'll be going, yeah, fuck red pants. People spit on you while they're walking past your fucking slumped over body. It won't be a pretty sight, okay? But I want to die in a, in a seriously sexual position. Yeah? I want to die in some way that makes people go, how did he manage to do that on the side of a cliff? And people will go, oh, okay, maybe he just wants to die naturally like a cross. <laughs> like that. Jesus like. But no, Jesus already stole that one. I don't want people to go, oh, he looks like Jesus. Um, I want people to go, you know, I can even maybe do it. This one, this one, this one. If I die, if I die stood up like this, right? People are going to freak out. And to be honest, if I'm there after 300 years and someone hasn't kicked me down the mountain, I'll be pretty impressed with that. Oh, God, did you see all the blood went in my head then? That's how gay is that? I like to keep all my blood in my lower bar, half of my body. Around my penis where it can get to work. But how would I actually want to die? If I can't die in a mountain, I've thought about this all my life. Thanks for asking. How would I want to die? I think I want to die. If my body's intact, I think I want to be filled up with helium and sweets and ascend 
not even that high, just past the tree line, and have children in the neighborhood shoot me with air rifles. How romantic. And then if, they, if they're lucky enough to hit me, I'll squirt out, smarties all over the street, and I'll be the candy man, making me think about my future and how hard I've got to work to be able to accomplish a dream like that. Because they don't let you do that if you're a loser, by the way. Nobody goes, oh, God, it's in his will. You know, the, 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 the council man who's got to pass it off, going, I don't know. He only had 96 subscribers on YouTube. I don't know if we can fill him with helium and sweets and let the children shoot him in the neighborhood. Uh-uh. I think this guy's got to go in the ground where no one will pay attention to him. A few races do not even bother going head-to-head -head with Mother Nature. Black people, they don't really fuck with natural disasters. I've never seen a brother near a mountain, let alone a steep incline, ladies and gentlemen. They keep all that death shit, you know, in-house. They're not fucking outsourcing it to the environment. Arabs, they don't even acknowledge volcanoes. Tsunamis, do I even need to say they're an Asian natural disaster? I think we all know that, don't we? And what an embarrassing way to be owned by Mother Nature. It's a funny thing to have water come into your house and take all your belongings, run off with them out to sea, to never be seen again. Where do they even go? There's, there's probably just Rolexes and fucking Hitachi ones at the bottom of the ocean. But I don't know. I, I hate water. It's so funny as well because it doesn't say shit when it's by itself, does it? When it's a little puddle on the floor, it keeps its mouth shut like a good little slut. Animals are starting to wake up, everybody. Well, look at this. Wow. No, this is in 1840. This is 2023. But you can see, I mean, blood on the pavement, smashed cars. These horses, we're not fucking about. And I don't blame them. I'd be so angry as well. I was the leader of transportation for hundreds of years, only getting knocked off by some bullshit fossil fuel engine. Spoot by noise from a building site. Women have a lot of in common with that because whenever they walk past a building site, they usually sprint. It's, but it's amazing how we used to ride these things into battle. We used to entrust them with, with our equipment, with our life. Look at them. Majestic. Now they shit the pants when they get catcalled by a builder. Pathetic. The army had to be deployed for this one. <laughs> Woo! Yep, three soldiers sustained non-life-threatening injuries. And that's not funny, but it is actually funny. So, But thank God they've been treated in hospital. Some of our heroes of the army there. Not got, not got Taliban children to... To wrestle in the desert. You'd think maybe they would have rang a few jockeys. Got a couple of the Irish folk on the phone. Let them brainstorm some ideas on how to capture them. But no, let's get out of the fucking military. I mean, we, we spend, what is it, 1.5% of the GDP on the fucking military. Let's get some of the army boys in it. Let's blow it up with it. Let's drop a tactical nuclear bomb in the middle of London. And flatten these horses for even thinking they could escape. I would not be letting that detail out to the press, by the way. We're meant to be strong and powerful, but we're getting run over by Shetland ponies outside of Euston Station. Poor things, man. These poor horses, you've got to feel for them. They've been fucked off to some Hyde Park barracks now. They'll get retired early, and you know they'll be, they'll be sent up to Skegness. And they'll be giving rides to adults with four teeth for the rest of their life. But it's not the ordinary for these animals to turn on us. We gave them a nice life. Look how this ram repaid this 80-year-old couple. Ram killed by police after elderly couple found dead in paddock at their home near Auckland. The pair who died were in their 80s. A relative said they were good people and didn't deserve this. Again. Again with this post- evaluation of people. I want to hear 
I want to hear what their internet provider has to say about this 80-year-old couple. The pair who died it were in their 80s. A relative said they were good friends. One of his enemies said that he was a piece of shit who committed bank fraud. <laughs> That'd be so funny. The other life forms on this planet are getting nervous at our activities. They're starting to think we've got to punish these people. And we've got to start taking action. If it's not the horses, it's the fucking rams. I fucking hate these pieces of shit. And they're starting to make me really sick. 